of all, guys, congratulations on the film. It's it's a lot of fun. It's and, it's, and it does it is a little scary. Uh, I'm a huge fan of yours uh, from the past, but now my nieces and nephews can be too. Awesome. Um, and to me, this seems like such a natural transition as a director, as a new challenge. Uh, what was it about the source material that really got you on board for this? I mean, Eric Kripke's script, for sure. I actually, I, I love Edward Gorey and collect Edward Gorey's artwork. And I had the cover of another Bel Air's book, Johnny Dixon and the Hand of the Necromancer. So I was unfamiliar with the series. But then it turns out <coughs> everybody I knew, they're like, oh, that's the book that got me into scary movies. That was like the gateway book for, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. That's what made them fall in love with horror. So I wanted to do a family movie. I wanted to do a fantasy. I wanted to do something that was much more at the Terry Gilliam end of the spectrum, like a, an early Tim Burton film. Sure, sure. Um, and really try and bring back that Amblin brand. And, and really, you know, it was, it was the opportunity to show how great a PG movie can be. Right. You know, and, and I remember as a kid, when you saw E.T., Raiders, Poltergeist, Gremlins, Goonies, Back to the Future, these were events, but you went with your parents. And it was, the movies were fun for the older brothers, the younger sisters, the parents, everybody in the movie got something out of it. Sure. And that's the kind of family experience I wanted to have. I wanted a movie that if you have, if you're eight years old, if there's a 17 year old, if there's a 14 year old, if the parents or grandparents, everyone's gonna get something from the movie. One thing I love about uh, Blu-ray, DVD, digital releases, they have this, um comment they have this kind of like behind the scenes stuff and it's almost like going to film school um and we i noticed that a lot of the stuff on this was practical practical sets practical effects uh how did that help your performance owen um well the set itself was just so amazing um there was so much like like i didn't see right here there's so much detail put into every single square inch of the set and i feel like if there's not a very good set it's hard to act around it because it's not much you can work with that I that also brings me to like CGI. I feel like that part is always really hard because like Eli will say, "Oh, wait, all right, now there's a big giant griffin made of leaves attacking you. Scream!" And so then I'm like, "We shoot. Where is it? Where is it?" Because I don't actually see it. Right. But well, I heard, also heard that you're a ball of energy and you're a great dancer and you pulled a prank on Jack Black. Has he ever gotten you back from that prank? Not yet, but I know he's gonna get me back so hard. And now, like every time I walk into a trailer, I'm like. Ah! Well, you were like, we have to prank Jack. And the I key know. is to mm -hmm. prank them as they're leaving. <laughs> if you prank them on day one, you're toast. But if yeah. it's after their last shot, that's a good time to get uh -huh. them. Jack wasn't expecting it. I think Jack thought that we would have pulled a prank earlier in the shoot. And by the end, it's like, well, they're certainly not going to do it now. It's the end. Got his goat. Speaking of Jack, you had Kate, you had Kyle, you had Owen. You assembled a great, great cast. And Kate and Jack mainly, like they, those worlds don't fit, but this works so perfectly. Why were they the right choices for this? You know, I think that Jack Black is our generation's Robin Williams. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, agree. I really think he's like, when Robin Williams does, started doing Dead Poets Society and Awakenings, he's like an Oscar nominated, Oscar winning actor, Goodwill Hunting, but he's also doing Mrs. Doubtfire, which is just as brilliant. And that's Jack, he's doing Bernie, he's doing Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot. He's also doing, you know, Jumanji. He's brilliant in, in all of them. And Kate really respects Jack as an actor. And obviously Jack respects Kate as an actor, but he thought she's really, really funny. So, you know, you're, this playful side of her is starting to come out at this point in her career. You know, she's kind of done it all. So she's having fun. So um, what we saw was Jack brought out the best comedy in Kate and Kate brought out the best drama in Jack. And what I loved about Owen was Owen was so strong at both of them. You know, I'd seen him in Daddy's Home and. And a lot of it is just him just kind of, you know, reacting. And reacting. Doing jokes. But this, he great, has to yeah. really carry the movie and be sad. And we see the whole movie through Lewis's eyes. And I remember shooting that first thing with the backpack where he comes in and he's like off the bus and like looking. You know, we had a whole opening that's on the DVD where it's the house a year earlier where Isaac does the spell, which we use in flashback. But I was like, no, we should see that. This whole thing is Lewis's journey. We've got to start it with, with uh, Owen. <laughs>